Hey guys, welcome back to Data with Dominic. And in today's video, uh, we're going to be talking about how the central banking system works in India and uh, what role the Reserve Bank of India plays and how, it's, uh, how it uses four or five key rates uh, to control the flow of money in the economy and regulate inflation and the interest industry and the credit industry and things like that. All right, so stay till the end. Um, and I've put together a nice compilation of information for you to quickly understand and grasp this topic along with some great resources. All right, uh, so just diving into, the, um, into my laptop. All right, so basically, India Central Bank is known as the Reserve Bank of India. And it's headquartered here in Mumbai, um, in South Bombay, actually. And it was set up, I think, in the year 1935, all right? So before independence. And currently, it's being uh, run by uh, the man in charge is Shakti Kanta Das. He's the governor of the RBI, which is the title given to the, uh, the top honcho at the RBI. And it's a political appointee. So it's appointed by a committee that includes the prime minister of the country, all right? So Shakti Kanta Das is term is almost up and it looks like he's going to be reappointed because um, uh, the experts say he's done a very good job. Debatable, but let's, uh, that's, that's for another time. Um, all right, so looking at the RBI's website, what are the main functions as according to them? All right, so they've got a few key functions. One is being a monetary authority. One is as a regulator and supervisor of the financial system, a manager of foreign exchange, an issuer of currency, uh, a developmental role, and a regulator and supervisor of payment and settlement systems and related functions, all right, Rel uh, banking and to the government and things like that, all right. But what we are imported, uh, uh, interested in today is how the RBI acts as a monetary authority and a regulator and supervisor of the financial system, all right. So it has uh, a set of four or five key rates which can, it can uh, adjust at its own, um, under its own mandate, uh, which controls um, the flow of money in the economy. And if you control the flow of money in the economy, you control how the interest or credit industry works and how the inflation in the economy um, uh, is managed. All right. So the first key term that they use is called the CRR, all right, or the cash reserve ratio. All right. So in this um, particular scenario, there are always three stakeholders, all right, one stakeholder being the RBI, uh, which is the central bank, then you have the um, the consumer banks or the cooperative banks, which is the bankers which you bank with. And then obviously there are us, the end consumers, all right? So three stakeholders. Uh, so how this scenario plays out is when you, as an end consumer, deposit 100 rupees with your consumer bank, say like an Axis bank or a HDFC bank, the CRR specifies a percentage of that amount which you've deposited that needs to be given back to the RBI for safekeeping, all right? This is so that that money is locked in and safe um, with the RBI. The banks do not make, the consumer banks do not make interest on this money. They just have to keep it locked in with the RBI um, as long as that money is deposited by you with the bank. All right. So currently, the uh, cash reserve ratio in India is around 4.5%, uh, which means for every 100 rupees you deposit, 4.5 has to be kept with the RBI, uh, with the RBI, 4.5 rupees. All right. And what are the effects or what are the impacts of the CRR? Obviously, the CRR, um, a lower CRR equals higher lendable resources and increasing money supply. All right. So if there's low inflation in the economy, but they want to spur growth, when the central bank or the RBI lowers CRR, that means the banks have more money to play with and lend out. That means interest rates come down and there's more money to be lent. All right. So money, money flow will increase in an economy, spurring economic growth, but also spurring um, inflation slightly and things like that. All right. So... Uh, a higher CRR helps to control inflation by limiting the amount of cash available in the market. That's the corollary, corollary of what we just spoke about. A lower CRR can lead to lessening interest rates due to a higher availability of funds. Again, what I just mentioned. A higher cash reserve equals lesser availability of cash for lending and lesser potential earnings for the banks. This is an important point. All right? so the banks obviously want to increase earnings and uh, profit for their uh, shareholders. But if they have a high CRR set by the RPA, uh, what happens to them is there's less money for them to lend out and they only earn income on money being lent out because the money kept with the RBI does not give them interest. So they'll always be lobbying to keep the CRR low. And currently the CRR, as we discussed, is 4.5%. All right. So this is the first big term in the economy, uh, term uh, rate that the RBI can use to control money flow in an economy. And it's called the cash reserve ratio. All right. Coming to the second important term, the second important term is the SLR or rate, I should say. SLR stands for statutory liquidity ratio, all right? So this is a ratio that the government uses 
to ensure the solvency of the banks. All right, that's why it's called liquidity ratio. It makes solvency means the banks should be liquid. So what what they, what I'm trying to say is in, when we paint that same scenario of the three stakeholders, the central bank RBI or RBI, the consumer banks, and the and we have our end consumers that is us. When we deposit that 100 rupees and say the cash reserve ratio is 5%, that means 5 rupees is given uh, to the RBI for safekeeping. There's 95 rupees with the bank. Now, this 95 rupees is not for lending out to everybody else, any Tom, Dick and Harry. Uh, the RBI actually has this SLR in place, which mandates that a certain percentage needs to be invested in liquid assets. All right, what that means is these a certain percentage of the remaining 95% uh, needs to be invested in liquid assets that are readily redeemable. These assets include government bonds and treasury bills and gold also. These are highly regulated markets. There's very low risk for the banks keeping being invested. They're highly liquid markets, which means the banks can readily exit at any point in time. Um, and also they earn interest on, on these investments. So it's not just um, dead cash lying in some uh, uh, account. All right. So the banks earn interest on whatever percentage of uh, money needs to be set aside as the statutory liquidity ratio, right? So from this 95, save the, the currency SLR in India is 18%. So the, the SLR is set on that initial 100 deposit. So 18% means 18 rupees. So five rupees goes as CRR to the RBI. There's no interest for the banks. And 18% 18 or 18 rupees is invested in readily liquid assets, uh, such as government bonds or treasury bills, all right? So now 95 minus 18, there's 87, 77 rupees left for the bank. And this, the bank can more or less use as it sees fit uh, to lend out to the public markets. All right, so the current SLR was 18%. And uh, why does the RBI regulate the SLR for banks? The RBI regulates the SLR in order to ensure just the right amount of money is available for lending, neither too much nor too less. The banks in turn earn interest on the SLR they keep as liquid assets and sees it, see it as a buffer to safeguard themselves. All right, so the main difference is that when you look between the CRR and the SLR, the CRR is used to control liquidity in the banks, right? The CRR um, is put in place by the RBI to make sure there's not over lending of money into the economy, causing inflation to go high, causing interest rates to really crash. Um, but the SLR is put in place to ensure solvency of the banks. That means when withdrawals come, to take their money out of the bank, all the money has not been uh, lent out again by the banks because banks can be responsible in search for profits, right? So the, all the money does not get lent out and that there is some fixed percentage of everybody's deposits that is in these liquid assets that can be immediately encashed and given to whichever withdrawers um, uh, come to the bank on any given day, all right? So the whole banking system is sort of like a confidence game, right? Where if one person goes and there's no money for him to withdraw, there's going to be a run on the bank. And then your banking system and financial system collapses. So the SLR is also another important uh, bellwether of an economy. All right. So that is the second key rate which um, the banks can use or the RBI can use to control the inflation and the credit industry or the lending industry in a particular country and therefore control the flow of money in the economy. The third rate is the repo rate. All right. So repo rate is something you must be keeping on hearing in the newspaper on any news channel or any finance channel and it's simple repo stands for repurchase rate and what it basically means is when we paint that same situation again between the three stakeholders of the RBI the commercial banks and uh, end consumers uh, that remaining 75 rupees or 78 rupees which 77 rupees which we had mentioned after the banks do the CRR and the SLR that can be lent out right and if they lend all that money out and there is Again, they feel there is a sh uh, slight cash shortage for their day-to-day -day operations. That means there could be a run in the bank. They just want to hedge their position and keep some excess liquidity with them. They can go to the RBI and ask for a short-term loan. All right. So these short-term loans, the RBI gives to them at an interest rate, um, which could be around 5 to 6%. And this interest rate is known as the repo rate. So it is basically a measure of how easily money is available to the commercial banks from the central banks, all right? So the repo rate is typically a short-term loan. And if it's for longer periods that the bank want to take a loan, that will be called that rate, which is basically the same as a repo rate for a longer term, that rate is called the bank rate, all right? So you might keep on be hearing repo rate and bank rate. It's basically uh, this only. When the banks need excess liquidity to, uh, to finance their day-to-day -day operations, they go to the RBI and ask for a loan. It's just a loan 
from a bank, a big bank, for a big bank, from a very big bank, right? So the repo rate is uh, very influential in the economy in the sense it basically control, controls loan interest rates because very often banks overlend themselves or overextend themselves, right? They're giving out loans with money they don't have. So they take uh, borrowings from the RBI to even uh, to give even further uh, loans. So based on the repo rate, they have um, the other interest rates calculated from the bank. So if the bank is getting, if your consumer, if like HDFC bank is getting money from the RBI at 5%, then they will be charging your consumers 7%, right? That 2% is their interest, their, their profit, which they're making. Or call, it's called a spread in finance. So that is where they make their money, all right? So if that, if the RBI takes the repo rate up to 6% and the bank still wants to maintain that profit ratio, they will take up the interest rates in the economy to 8% and that's passed on to the end consumer. So that is how um, the repo rate affects loan interest rates. So savings and investment rates are also affected. The repo rate also affects returns on savings. Higher repo rates can lead to better returns on fixed deposits and other savings as banks offer higher interest rates to attract deposits. All right? they want, so uh, when they want to attract depositors into the bank and they don't want to take money from the RBI because the repo rate is high, they'll raise the returns on FDs. All right? And that will attract more people to deposit uh, into an FD account in the bank and thus they're getting their money at a cheaper source. All right? And mortgage rates are also affected by the repo rates. Uh, variable rate mortgages, that means mortgages which are loans which change based on the economic situations in a country uh, can, in, uh, can increase with the repo rate. That means when the repo rate goes up, your loan, which was at a lower rate earlier, will then go up. So it's best to avoid these kind of variable rate loans, obviously. So that was the repo rate and the bank rate, also very important uh, terms in an economy. And finally, we have... Uh, just to keep you guys updated, the current repo rate in India is 6.5% and the bank rate is 5.15%, right? Obviously, the bank rate is a long-term loan. So that's why it's much, uh, it's a lower rate of interest than obviously the repo rate, which is the short-term loan, all right? And why it's called the repo rate or repurchase rate is because this loan is basically structured in a way that the, the, the central banks give out government bonds or bills uh, to these banks to be repurchased at a particular price at a later date. All right, so that's how they structure it, and that's why it's called the repurchase rate. All right, just an interesting bit of information for you guys. And finally, we have one last rate, and that is the reverse repo rate. All right, so again, same scenario where we have the RBI, we have the central banks, and uh, in the RBI, we have the consumer banks, and we have the end consumers. Right, so say a bank is operating in such a situation where they have excess cash lying with them in their accounts. That means there's no, there's no, there's a lot of depositors. There's not many people taking loans in the economy, all right? And they have excess cash with them and they want to do something with this cash that is quite risk-free, all right? The whole thing with banks is they want returns, but they want risk-free returns, all right? They don't mind compromising how much returns in, in exchange for it being completely risk-free. So what they can do is they can give this money back to the RBI and the RBI pays them an interest rate, which is known as the reverse repo rate, all right? So typically this is done in situations when the RBI also wants to maintain uh, less or uh, wants to slow down the flow of uh, money in the economy. They will put a high reverse repo rate. That means banks are incentivized to store their money with them, with the RBI and thus, thus uh, give out less money into the economy, right? So when there's a high reverse repo rate, banks are incentivized to give their money back to the RBI rather than put it into the economy, into hands of people like you and me as loans for business and things like that, all right? So the RBI can do that and again control um, um, the inflation and interest rates in the economy, all right? So the result is that, the, so when the reverse repo rate is increased, uh, the banks find it more feasible to deposit the money in the central bank rather than providing it to individuals or business interests, which results in boosting the value of the rupee. That means there's less uh, rupees in the economy. So that means less inflation, which means the value of the rupee increases. So the impact of changes in reverse repo rate can be seen in home loans as an increased reverse repo rate will encourage banks to invest their surplus funds in low risk government securities instead of providing credit to individuals. So like I said, the banks are incentivized to give the money back to the RBI rather than put it out into the economy and risk it becoming a non-performing asset for them. All right. So that's uh, those are some of the key rates that the Central Bank of India can use to control the flow of money in an economy. So what do we learn today? We learn the CRR, which is the cash reserve ratio. We learn the SLR, uh, 
uh, the statutory liquidity ratio. Then we looked at um, the reverse, the repo rate and the bank rate. And finally, we looked at the reverse repo rate. All right. So these are the five key rates that the banks use to control the flow of money in, econo in, in economy. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. I link to all these resources in the description below. And if you want to uh, learn more about finance, economics, investing, uh, personal finance, geopolitics, macroeconomics. I'm going to be uh, making videos on those topics. So definitely stay subscribed and turn the notification bell on so that you are uh, intimated whenever I release a new video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.